to begins on page 78. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves, and we are truly sorry and humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, for the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you and forgive you of all of your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open up our lips. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us say together the Venite, which is found on page 82 of your Book of Common Prayer. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before our Lord, our Maker. For he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Our psalm appointed today is Psalm 85, verses 1 and 2, and then verses 8 through 13. You can read together with me by full verse. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people and blotted out all of their sins. I will listen to what the Lord is saying, for he is speaking to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly his salvation is near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her, that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out. And I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, 
the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of the Lord. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel, that mourns in lonely exile here, until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, the wisdom from on high, who addressed all things mightily. To us the path of knowledge show, and teach us in her ways to go. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, O come, thou Lord of might, who to thy tribes on Sinai's height in ancient times didst give the law in cloud and majesty and awe. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, the branch of Jesse's tree, free them from Satan's tyranny, that trust thy mighty power to save, and give them victory o'er the grave. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. A reading from the Gospel of Mark. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins and people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and he ate wild locusts and honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. So today is the second week of Advent. You know, I read once that Christmas is a time for clutter. 
Of course, the person that wrote that uh, was not a Episcopalian, and, and it really is Advent, but I digress. Christmas is a time for clutter, or Advent is a time for clutter. As I wrote this sermon, my house was certainly cluttered. It was, the mid, it was in the middle of transformation from our regular decor to Christmas decor. So boxes were everywhere, tinsel was around, uh, lights were strewn all over the place. Clutter was certainly a thing in my house. And let me tell you, for Ginger and Jordan, decorating is serious business. I'm sad this year that we can't invite all of you over for Christmas cookies and hot chocolate and maybe even hot toddies, but we will get to that next year. In normal times, it isn't just our homes that are cluttered. Our calendars swell with a multitude of extra calendar obligations during Advent. From word parties to get-togethers with friends and family, our already busy schedules get, well, cluttered. Alas, this year is different. Many of us are working less, traveling less, and spending less time, or spending less time with our extended family, maybe more time with our families at home. We're also trading our shopping trips to the city. One thing that we at the Vidinger family have looked forward to for shopping online. Maybe you're decorating, but you don't have the energy to really do it up this year. This year's different. But I suspect there is still a lot of clutter, albeit maybe of a different sort. If you're like me, your mind might be a little cluttered. I know for me, having to quarantine this week has thrown me way off. I am a person who needs a rhythm of life. And when I don't have it, my mind and my soul get very cluttered. It's also probable that your heart is a bit cluttered as well. The tension between the desire to be with families and friends at this time of year and the need to stay isolated to protect them and yourself may be a bit overwhelming for your heart. So I admit it may be a time for cluttering, but it really shouldn't be. In our readings today, we hear the familiar command, prepare the way of the Lord and make his path straight. In this sense, preparation is very much the opposite of cluttering. There's this phenomenon, you may know about it, that happens when women are pregnant. It's called nesting. And I'm sure you've heard of it. But it's a real thing. It's a documented, scientifically documented thing. Nesting. There's this innate force that drives women at a certain point in their pregnancy to start prepping the home for the new arrival. This process is different for, for everyone, but in mo most cases, it includes preparing a, a special place for the baby and uncluttering the home. I suppose preparing the way for the Lord is a lot like nesting. It requires us to unclutter and prepare a place for them in our home. The words we hear about preparing the way for the Lord come from John the Baptist this morning. I love John the Baptist. He was kind of an ancient punk rocker, so I, I feel a kindred spirit to him. He was anti-establishment, his look was wild and made him stick out, and he spoke the truth to power. There's nothing more punk rock than John the Baptist. And his words today is a recitation of a promise from Isaiah. The promise that we read in our, our Hebrew scripture this morning. It's a promise to a people in exile, a promise that a return home was not only possible, 
but that the people should start preparing because God was about to be revealed. God wasn't just about to be revealed to them, but to all people. It was a promise of hope that the people of Israel desperately needed. But the promise of John was a much bigger promise than that of Isaiah. It wasn't a promise that the people could go home to be with God. No, this was a promise that God was coming to be with the people. It was a promise of the very presence of God being born in this world. As the message paraphrase of the Bible puts it in the first chapter of the Gospel of John, and God moved into the neighborhood. In our gospel today, in the words of John the Baptist, is the very essence of Advent. The very presence of God is coming to earth, and it's time to prepare for it. This year, more than ever, we need to hear the hope in John's words. Our hearts should flutter with a joyous anticipation. And this year, maybe more than ever, we have an opportunity to actually do so. In some ways, COVID is a gift this holiday season. Not COVID itself, but the fact that we're having to slow down and be present. It has done some of the uncluttering for us. But there's still more work to be done. Preparing the way for the Lord means making choices. What things in our lives are cluttering our path to a relationship with God? Is it busyness, addiction, anger, resentment, fear, pride, selfishness? Clearing the path of those things are not easy. Uncluttering those sorts of things in our lives take work. It takes a radical reordering of our lives and our minds. Fortunately, over the past couple thousands of years, the church has developed ways to do this. Or at least to work on this. So I would like to challenge everyone this year to try one of those things that goes back, like way back. It goes back to some of my very favorite people in all of Christian history, the Desert Fathers and Mothers. If you remember, I've talked about them before. The Desert Fathers and Mothers were early Christian hermits, ascetics, or, or monks who lived mainly in the Skedis Desert of Egypt, beginning around the end of the 3rd century. If you remember our discussion about Constantine a couple weeks ago, it was a large part of the, the hijacking of Christianity in, in, through Constantine was a, hard, a large part that, that drove the desert fathers and mothers out. They saw Christianity as being watered down and corrupted, so they went out into the desert to be away from all of that. During that time, a pattern of daily prayer started to develop. It was the practice that influenced the Benedictine rule of life. It is where the pattern of prayer that we call the daily office began. The original cycle had eight different hours in which specific prayers would take place, but today, thankfully, in the Episcopal Church, we have four. Morning prayer, noon prayer, evening prayer, and home. There are a few ways that I have found to unclutter my life and orient myself towards God that are more, uh, that are better than the daily office. The daily office, for me, has been a key that has unlocked my heart, that has unlocked my ability to unclutter my mind and my heart and reorient myself towards God. 
So this year, I want to challenge you as part of the remainder of your Advent to take up part or all of the daily office. The easiest way is to commit to doing either morning or evening prayer or even both. There are a lot of amazing, accessible resources for praying the daily office. In my letter on Wednesday in the e-blast, I listed three and provided links for them. I encourage you to go back to that email if you still have it. If you don't, shoot me an email and I'll be happy to send them to you again. Advent is a time for waiting with anticipation for the coming of the Lord. Advent is a time for actively preparing our hearts and minds for the coming of Christ the King. Advent is a time of joy, peace, and most of all, hope. So my prayer today is that we are all inspired to begin the task of preparing a path to our hearts by tackling the all-important work of uncluttering our lives. Amen. Let us stand together and say the Apostles' Creed, which is found on page 80 or 96 of your Book of Common Prayer. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> and together we'll say, uh, Suffrages be. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Day by day we bless you. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Lord, show us your love and your mercy. And you, Lord, is our hope. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way of our salvation, give grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your Spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Creator of the stars of night, your people's everlasting light. O Christ, Redeemer of us all, we pray you hear us when we call. In sorrow that the ancient curse should doom to death our universe. You came, O oh Saviour, to set free your own in glorious liberty. When this old world drew on toward night, you came, but not in splendour bright. Not as a monarch, but the child of Mary, blameless mother mild. At your great name, O oh Jesus, now all knees must bend, all hearts must bow. All things on earth with one accord, like those in heaven, shall call you Lord. Come in your holy might, we pray, redeem us for eternal day. Defend us while we dwell below from all assaults of our dread foe. To God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit, three in one. Praise, honor, might, and glory be from age to age eternally. Let us say the general thanksgiving together. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life. Last Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. So life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be swift to love, make haste to be kind, and go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.